Okay, continuing the story of inverse functions, I want to talk about graphing. Um, in between that segment and this segment, I just saw DJ Spooky, so now I feel like I'm I'm like multimedia guy, but I don't have my I don't have my iPod to mix my break beats, which is just too bad. Okay, uh, so let's look at this. This one's going to be a little more complicated, but it's going to have some good features to talk about. If I just look at a function like this, here's the graph. So y equals f of x. How would I graph the inverse function? Well, if I look at what happened, there were two things that I happened that I did in the algebra. One was I solved for x in terms of y, and so for example, with this function, that turned into this expression. Well, that hasn't do that wouldn't do anything with the graph. Like for example, if I had a point here that was like one comma three. That means when x is 1, f of x, which is y, is 3. Well, this is actually exactly the same thing. If f of 1 equals 3, f of inverse of the output gives you back the input. So, in a sense, this graph is kind of the graph of the function and the graph of the inverse function at the same time. But here's where the letter switch actually com becomes really important because I actually want to get a new graph, I want to get a graph of y equals f inverse of x. And I'd like to actually be able to graph them on the same graph where x means the same thing as it did to, the, to start. It's always the, inver in, the input of the function. It's going to be the input of f, and I want it to be the input of f inverse as well. What does the graph of f inverse look like if I graph it in the usual way, where x on the horizontal axis is the input? Well. So what that means is the only thing you have to do graphically to create the graph of the inverse is just the letter switch, is just switch x and y. And so this point 1, 3 is going to become the point 3, comma 1. And if I just take every single point on this graph and switch x and y, that's going to be, become the graph of the function. Now that's a whole lot of work. How do we do that more efficiently? Well, there's a shortcut which most people sort of present as the whole deal, which is to note that switching x and y is a reflection. There are certain points that won't get moved at all. When I switch with x with y, if I happen to be the point 1, 1, or 2, 2, or 3, 3, those wouldn't get moved. And so this dotted line, y equals x, is not going to get moved at all. But everything else is going to get flipped right across that line. 1, 3 goes to 3, 1. That is going to be exactly a flip across the line y equals x. Now, for some graphs, that's enough. For some graphs, you can just visualize that and see what's going to happen. But I find that to not work very well for anything complicated, even for me, and especially for someone who's just learning about it, I find there, that it helps to know a little bit more about that. So I claim that this guy goes to this. Let me let me draw that a little bit bigger. I'm going to come back to this as a more complicated example, hopefully, if I have time. But I don't, I don't want to take too much time. But let's just use that simple example, kind of an upward swoop, kind of like e to the x. And I want to illustrate something that's good to remember about drawing inverse functions. Uh, let's say this goes through, what was it going through? It was going through like 2 here. So you can certainly pick out any particular points that you have and flip them across. But you don't want to just laboriously plot points and connect the dots. That's never a good way to, way to plot things. And so why, how could I be sure that this is giving me an accurate picture? And the way I do it is I make a little table, or I remember a little table of words and terms and ideas. And everything on one side is going to be flipped to what's on the other side. X gets flipped with Y. Horizontal, that's a, a word associated with x, that gets flipped to vertical. Uh, close to horizontal, like a shallow angle, gets flipped with steep. Left and right, left means make x smaller, right means make x bigger, so that gets flipped to up, or sorry, down and up. And um, so let's see how that would work. I'm going to trace through this graph, and I'm going to use these verbal descriptors to describe features here, and I'm going to make sure that all the features correspond over here. It starts out 
way to the left with a shallow angle close to a horizontal asymptote. And then you just rewrite that and you switch everything. So this guy starts out way down uh, and it's at a steep angle close to a vertical asymptote. Now what does this do? This guy moves to the right and gets steeper. This guy moves to the moves up and gets shallower or less steep. Uh, oh, other things. The uh, the second quadrant gets flipped with the third quadrant, but the first quadrant flips with itself, and the fourth quadrant flips with itself. This was in the second quadrant, so it's going to flip to the third quadrant, and vice versa. This guy is in the first quadrant, so it stays in the first quadrant, but in, across the the line. So let me show you how you would use that real quick to sketch the graph. Uh, the graph of the inverse of 1 over 1 plus x. So here's a sketch of 1 over 1 plus x. And here's where I'm going to use the colors. Okay, and now this, and this was, um, this was 0 comma 1. And this was asymptote at minus 1. So it's got a horizontal asymptote. It's got a vertical asymptote. It's got this guy. So let's say in a neutral color black. I'll graph that just as a guide. And so I'm going to actually uh, go through and sketch it with the verbal kind of description. And then I'm going to make sure that it looks good and, f and looks like it's a symmetrical picture when across y equals x. So first, let me draw the asymptote. That's going to become the, an asymptote at y, a horizontal asymptote. Vertical asymptote at x equals minus 1 becomes a horizontal asymptote at y equals minus 1. This point is going to get flipped over. 0, 1 gets flipped to 1, 0. Now I'm just going to trace through here. This was a horizontal asymptote with y negative going to the right. Well, what does that translate to? Vertical asymptote with x negative going up, and as this goes to the right and down, this goes up and left. And it's, gonna sh it's going to end up with at a horizontal asymptote. Okay. Now, also, any place where this graph crosses y equals x, we know that doesn't move. And those are pretty vaguely graphed right here, but th those are also great things to graph. Okay, and now it's coming down from a vertical asymptote at minus 1. So it, well, x was really big, sorry, y was really big, so that means x on the other graph is going to be really big. It's going to be going to the left from a horizontal asymptote. It's heading towards this point. Uh, ooh, you know what? I didn't graph, I didn't flip that very well. This guy is supposed to be higher than this guy, so this guy should be over here, sorry. Okay, so it's going to be heading through here, and then after the blue graph went through here, it went to the right with a shallow slope towards a horizontal asymptote. This is going up and to the left, because this was going down, that's in decreasing y value. This is going to the left, which is decreasing x value, heading towards that asymptote. So I did that kind of quickly, but that's a systematic procedure for getting the graph. If you look at it carefully, one way to look at it with a piece of paper, you can actually just look at it, turn this vertical, and th together, it's, it's a pretty crappy uh, rendition, but it should look symmetrical about this axis. It's easier for our eyes to see symmetry around a vertical axis. We're, we're built that way. Um, but I think it's really hard to do that example just from, okay, take that blue curve and flip it. Wait, aren't you done yet? Isn't that easy? Well, it's not easy, actually. But if you plot some specific points, make sure you plot any points where it crosses the y equals x line, because those aren't going to move, and then look at all the features and how they translate, you can actually uh, graph the inverse of a pretty complicated function and get a pretty good sketch of it. All right, that's a good place to stop.